if I'm not together with my baby mama, do I need to help my kids get the baby mama a gift? Ooh, Ooh we started <laughs> out with a hot one right here. This is hot. Were we supposed to answer that? You got to yeah. answer that. Okay, but tell me what you did for your mom first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody be chiming in here. We're not trying to get anybody in trouble. Just they, hey, hey, this is the question they asked me. How do you think I felt? How do you think I felt? Well, you felt like, man, that's the pastors at the well don't get asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's baby mamas all over at the well too. Uh, <laughs> but the dudes over there are probably paying child support. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Well, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Not Offended Podcast. It's your boy Anthony right here, hanging out with the guys. This is episode nine. I want to go ahead and encourage everybody right now to go ahead and share this. Go ahead and let everybody know what's going on. To all of you who've been following us, we appreciate it. We never, we never knew it would blow up so fast. We were just four guys getting together. But I want to welcome everybody. As you know, I got the to- I got the token. I almost gave him a new name. No, I got the agent right next to me. I got the token and the bishop uh, across from me. And hey, we're just gonna dive right in. Uh, I was thinking about it yesterday. It was Mother's Day. Did everybody do something for their mom? Let's let's just get it out there. And I had a real uh, serious thought the other day. Um, I, I don't know just like what to do. Somebody hit me up with a question. Okay. So you're going to tell me what you did for your mom and they're going to answer this question. This is serious though. They said, if I'm not together with my baby mama, do I need to help my kids get the baby mama a gift? Ooh. Ooh, we started out with a hot one right here. This is hot. Were we supposed to answer that? You got to answer that. Okay, but tell me what you did for your mom first. (laughs) Okay, nobody be chiming in here. We're not trying to get anybody in trouble. Just, hey, hey, this is the question they asked me. How do you think I felt? How do you think I felt? Well, you felt like, man, the pastors at the well don't get asked that question. (laughs) Nah, there's baby mamas all over at the well, too. But the dudes over there are probably paying child support. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome yeah. back to the Not Offended yeah. Podcast. We talk about everything people don't want to talk about. But Bill, tell us, what did you do for your mom? And, right. and and do you feel obligated to get your baby mama some if you're not together? This is good. Not my baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so you're still making that clear on the record. <laughs> no baby mamas out there. All right? yeah. Shout out to Janet. We know you watch. No. This is good. Yeah, so. My I, one and only. My one and only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, I had a request to uh, make chicken wings. I got this. Oh, that's what's uh, up. This recipe I got from my brother, and uh, went home, threw some chicken wings on the grill, and uh, my mom came over, and we kind of just hung hey, out. That's and good. So did a little barbecue, and uh, yeah, it was fun times. Fun times, good times. Got got a car, got uh, flowers, and uh, we had a good time hanging out. So. Uh, whoa. So yeah. So what question. advice would you give? Yeah, let's get to the serious part here. I had my kids. Hmm. Uh, no, I don't think you're obligated to get, I think the kids, uh, okay. maybe make a card or huh. something, but no gift. Cause it's probably coming out of my pocket, right? <laughs> my kids don't have any money. I got to go get the gift. And so I'm going to say, like right, I feel like right now people are watching this Yeah, and like, if they could, they would throw dart emojis at you right now. Like, I feel <laughs> like this just, you're going to get some hate mail, bro. Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah, that's just my, so double down. So double down. Double, double down. down. Let me <laughs> double down on that. So yeah, that's uh, maybe a what, card. What maybe if I'll make, small make kids. a card or so. What if they're small kids? Like say they're under like uh, seven same thing. Or, same card, thing. Okay. just a card. Okay. Who wants to go next? I mean, this this is getting good. Go Bill, ahead, Bill's go coming ahead. in hot right now. This is good. So I, uh, my mom's living in Houston, so I sent them uh, crumble cookies. Oh, nice. That's a good call. Yeah. What kind though? That's what matters. Um. There was a chocolate chip. That's there was good. A snickerdoodle. Always. There was like a lemon one. That's fire. And there was a different one. It was like a four pack. Oh, that's good. They um, appreciate it. So you FaceTime. Yeah. So, them? Then we, so that was, they got delivered, I think, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. And then uh, we FaceTime yesterday. So okay, she, good. they got the. They don't. I mean, they don't, they're not trying to look at me, but, but they got the kids. The kids. The kids. Yeah. The kids. Yeah. yeah. Once you have kids, you're irrelevant. Yeah. 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 That's important. Okay. Now. Go. Okay. So I literally got asked this question. They said, Pastor. What do I do? So I'm not with my baby's mama no more. Um, kids are young. Like, do I, am I obligated to get some? And I'm going to give you my answer later before y'all get mad at me. So go ahead, Mike. What do you do, Mike Cook? If this okay. is you, what do you do? 
Are you obligated or are the kids obligated? Okay, so those are two Ooh, different questions. You know what? Okay, the kids are that's ob- a great question. The kids are obligated. Okay. Okay. Now, are you current on your child support? Okay, because you start, you know, you haven't been doing anything. Yeah, you should probably do a little something. something okay. okay? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're giving me an answer in layers right now. Yeah, there's a lot of layers. Here, okay. Especially at our church. Okay, so Come I'm current. Visit. I'm um, current in my child support. Now what? You know what? You should be a good dad. You know, show the kids that you need to honor mom Ooh. and show them like what they should do. And then, then they should ask mom, hey, can we get some money? And then mom will pay for her Mother's Day gift. Oh, okay. You kind of rode the fence there. You kind of went back and forth. Yeah, I'm not paying for no Mother's Day card. That's where I'm at. I, I'm like, I gotta get the gift. I'll I help. Feel, I felt I'll like help. you started out real good. You got yeah. some hand clapping emojis. <laughs> I feel like then it was just you sink, bro. This is like Look, a, a cliff. You 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 tell the kids these are great ideas, right? Have mom give them some money so that they can go buy it. But I'm not gonna pay for it. Ooh, I feel like you guys are digging a hole for all of us. Okay, Bishop, come on, Bishop. You're the words of wisdom. You, 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 you opine all, in such an eloquent way. Come on, help us out here. Uh, just get the shovels and unbury us here. Come on. Well, so I did. I bought uh, my mom flowers. Nice. What a good son. Um, and then we went to our house on a Sunday after church. Oh, good. Out, so, so had, a gift and some quality time. Yep, this is good. Yep. Had a uh, had lunch over there. I got with them. Um, now. Should you buy your baby's mama a gift? Well, it depends on a few things. Did See, there's leave? layers. Yeah, yeah. There's layers. layers. Yeah. I, what, oh. you, you guys, this is the not offended podcast. Okay, you are you on good terms? Here. Okay, are you on good terms or are you on bad terms? You on well, bad terms? I'm not gonna get her nothing. <laughs> We're thinking, like, did she leave you? Did you Ooh. leave her? Oh, oh. Ooh, okay, okay, hold on. Yeah. Let me write this down. Did she, hey, hey, Bishop, did she already question. take your car? Did she oh. already take your house? <laughs> yeah. right? She took yep. your kids. Why are you gonna get her something? If you cheated on me, I ain't getting you nothing. Oh my gosh. I mean, obviously, you want your parents to honor their mom, but it's like, is your mom worth honoring if she cheating on me like i forget that i don't care i feel like we lost half our audience right now i feel like <laughs> this is divisive right but here. you know you know if everything's good now and maybe she got me something last father's day then yeah i might get her something yeah like <laughs> <laughs> hey if you're like truly co-parenting you know yeah. you got a good thing going oh my gosh yeah i gotta get something too you know i'm a father too i need to get honored so you oh, honor me and i honor you back you know just give and take oh man you spend 20 i spend 20 <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to that Not Offended podcast. I apparently, I, I just picked the wrong topic here. So I got a, I, I don't know if it was a, a message or if I got a, a, a phone text. I can't remember now. But this person, gentleman, reached out and said, well, my kids are young. I'm not with the baby mama. Do I, am I obligated to get a gift? And I'm a pastor. Like, you know, I can't really... You know, I don't have the luxury of being, you know, a a judge and jury and arbitrator of like who was right, who was wrong and who left who. I'm thinking about the kids. So shout out to all the moms right here. Forget the rest of these three knuckleheads over here. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to all the moms. Pastor, get his spiritual again. Get his spiritual. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you wanted our unfiltered, not offended. (laughs) The answers. I'm giving you my unfiltered answer. Uh, so no, you, I so you, you preface it with a filter, which no, I'm a pastor. no. I said, I said, listen, she is still the mother of your children, and you need to find it in your heart to do a little something, something, just a little something. I don't know, make a card, throw a gift in there, flowers that the kids can bring, because you do want to raise your children in the right way. That will always be their mother. I thought that's what I said. Well, no, y'all went yeah. off into like, hey, if she did 20, I'll do 20. You know, are you current on child support? I'm just saying none of that matter. We just need to honor mom. Yeah, but the That's byproduct all. of all that was that you got her something. <laughs> <laughs> all jokes aside, yes, you should do okay. something to honor the mother. There we the go. Scripture tells us to honor your mother and father. See, you no don't want to raise. what they do. So you want to teach your kids. You don't want to raise honor. baby kids. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. So. Getting down to some things, I wanted to talk a little bit about, we haven't brought up anything sports related in a while, and okay, so I'm a huge Canelo Alvarez fan, Saul, right? I'm a huge fan, I bought the UFC fight, and I bought the boxing match, and I'm not going to lie to you, it's the first time uh, in a long time that I was really just focused all on boxing and not really paying attention to the UFC. Even though I'm a huge UFC fan, I was just, I'm so intrigued by Canelo Alvarez and what he's been able to do. 
But I literally watched him like, I'm going to use the term bite off more than he could chew yeah. this, this last week. And I know you guys watched the fight. Did anything stand out to you? I mean, I, I have never seen, um, I had never seen a fight where Canelo Alvarez has fought before where he just looks so much physically smaller. And I know he fought it. Uh, I think he came in at like 173 and the fight was at 175. But it's like, I, I, I literally said to myself, I don't know if he could ever weigh that much. Where that guy probably came in, Bivial probably came in that night probably at 185 mm -hmm. after he, you know, he got rid of all the water weight and then ballooned back up. I mean, there was a legit probably 10, 15 pound weight difference. And here's my question. Do you feel like he bit off more than he could chew? Do you feel like that's just, that's a weight class he's not going to win all those belts in? Well, um, can we start with his intro? It takes like 15 minutes to get to the fight. Oh my gosh, it took forever. They like ele elevated, elevated him and then put him back down. down. I was Everybody waiting for James like Brown that. to come out in Rocky IV and do Coming to America, bro. It was like, that was the longest thing ever. Yeah, but um, I thought he just fought the wrong fight. Uh, if you've looked at, go back to the his previous fights, you know, in the first uh, three rounds, he's usually filling the guy out. Yeah. Right, and he came out swinging in those first three three rounds. Right. And, and Bevo re really looked like he was fighting uh, Canelo's previous fights where he was trying to fill Canelo. Out. Yep. And by the uh, and so going into like the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, uh, it looked like uh, Bevo figured him out a little bit. He had that jab going. He had that jab going, figured it out. But now Canelo's the rest of the fight is trying to still figure out how do I get in there? I think he caught him with an uppercut, but that was it. I, th uh, I thought he didn't use the body enough. Right, Canelo's known for that, going to the body yep. and letting those boxers uh, put their hands down. Didn't do that enough. I think he was hitting them kind of on the arms and shoulders and things. And so, to me, I thought he just kind of had a bad game plan coming hmm. in. That was my thought. Okay. You guys? Yeah, I mean, watching that fight, you go, man, if these guys fight ten times, you know, are they five and five? I don't think so. I mean, Neither it looks I, right. so it looks so drastic. I mean, I'm thinking maybe eight and two, nine and one, if that. Ooh, um, okay. You know, it, it, because the other fighter, how do you say his name? Bible? Dimitri Bivial. Bivial. Mm -hmm. Dimitri. <laughs> Big D. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> he was. I mean, he was taller. He, he was. was faster. He was. Um, you know, uh, Canelo couldn't get inside. I mean, it was like four to one on punches. There was such a drastic difference in, in not even just their game plans, but just in, in their physical demeanor, their confidence. He looked younger. Look, uh, <laughs> Canelo looked small and old. Yeah, that's a good point. And he looked big and fast. Yeah. So, Deshaun, do you think, do you think uh, Canelo did the right thing by asking for a rematch? Because he asked immediately right for a rematch. I was asleep. Oh, you were asleep? Yeah, on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what happened. I feel good right now. I'll sleep. On the bed oh, you were asleep? Right. Yep. Well, what do you guys think? I mean, he called for that rematch right away. I don't know. I'm not interested in seeing that again. I think it's going to be the same fight. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going he's gonna to wait for Canelo to attack. He's going to have his guards up, and then he's going to kind of counterpunch him. And yeah. So, so I don't know if you guys know this, but he started out as a lightweight, then a welterweight. I mean, so he's moved up. I think I did the math. He moved up 30 pounds. So he's won championships in all those divisions. And he moved up 30 pounds to the light heavyweight at 175. So that was absolutely, I don't know that, and you guys, if you chime in on, uh, online, you can tell me if somebody else has done it. I don't know that anybody else has done that. He literally, and he's won belts in all those divisions. I believe it's four or five divisions. And nobody else has done it. And three of them, he's unified them. So I'm like, he truly is a rare breed. But I think at the 175, I, I, I just I just don't see it. I'm with you, Mike. I, I don't see it. Here, here's another thing we need to talk about. We didn't get a chance to talk about. I think this is really interesting. Talk about another first, right? The Georgia Bulldogs in the draft had 15 players. 15 players from the Georgia Bulldog football team went in the NFL draft. That is a first. That has never happened before. You guys got any thoughts on that? Were they just that dominant or were they just that dominant? Yeah, um, 15. 15. Man. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, a lot of the, probably on the defensive side. They had a couple, uh, couple in the first rounds, I, I believe. And, Thought they um, had four in the first round, didn't they, on the defensive side? It was yeah, something that, they, ridiculous. They, yeah, they, they were just that good of a team. But, um, you know, I think that points out to Alabama. I think Alabama beat them in the, earlier in the year and then lost to them later on. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that, that's – uh, and they'll probably reload next year too. Oh yeah, they've reloaded. reloaded. 
And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with these guys in the NFL. But 15 is a lot of players. What I thought was interesting, something um, they're talking about the uh, University of Texas. Right. They had zero going giga draft. Is that the first yeah. time in but, like maybe 30 years, 40 years? Was, I think what the number was 32 players who played uh, um, a football in Texas in high school got drafted. Correct. It's California, Texas, Florida that puts out the most 32, NFL football 32 players. 32 players who played right. high school football in Texas got drafted. Zero from the um, University of Texas. The male's like, man, they can't So keep they're not staying home. They're not keeping their own no. players. And they're the richest uh, football team. <clears throat> That's true. All the college football teams. That's true. They can't keep Most people players. don't know that. Correct. Most it's people incredible. don't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, call that oil money. They want to spend all the money. But they still can't keep these players. Right. Oh, that was incredible. Right. Mm-hmm. Mike, any thoughts on that? 15 players. I mean, we're packed, we're packed 12 fans over here, so that, that hurt us. They, yeah. have more pe- they have more people than we had at, like in all packed 12 schools. You know what I mean? Yeah, It was yeah, that no, bad. No, we hate the SEC for sure. We do. Um, but, I mean, the, the fact that they did that was just amazing. That's incredible. Um, e- even though, like, if they have 15, you're probably thinking maybe two to four of those guys probably got drafted based on where they went to school, right? Yep. They just have good film. You're playing against a guy who, you know, is going to elevate your stock. Right. Or with playing with a guy who's going right. to elevate your stock. Uh, but it's just so, I mean, it's still pretty cool. I mean, I'm not a big Georgia guy at all, I mean, being a Pac-12 guy. Right. But for a team to produce that, that's pretty – it was incredible. It was incredible. Okay, so one last thing before we move off the topic of sports, right? Because it's not a offended podcast. We do talk about a lot of things that really do offend some people. But we hadn't got to talk sports, and I wanted to because I wanted to pick your brain on some things. NBA Finals. Do we got, do we got anybody here who's going to make a bold statement right here, right now, and who's going to be in the finals? Does anybody want to take a stab at it? Who do you think? I mean, everybody's putting money on Golden State. They think, that they think it's the Dubs years. Uh, for the record, I am not a Golden State Warriors fan. Um, I don't hate them, but I definitely I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't mind if they're in the you know I don't mind if they're in the finals. But I, does anybody? Yeah, I'm a fan of them. Okay, so here's, a, here's why. Because wait, you're they, a fan of Golden State? Yeah, well, just, just I pictured him for a Laker guy I myself. Say, I oh, never, yeah, I, I never heard Laker, we'll talk guy. basketball. Okay. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like most basketball. Asians like Golden State. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they put it for. There you go. Oh, it's the agent, go. The, shot, the agent, university. The there you went. Sorry, uh, sorry, that Bill. is sorry. true though. Yeah. Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. So, as a Mexican, I gotta like the Cowboys, Niners, or the Raiders. Is that what that is? is that you what started you with the Canelo fight. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, come on, are you a pound. Raiders fan? You don't like Golden State, man. I just, just, just Oakland, the Bay. Come on, no nah, man. So, because nah. he's Mexican, they like Lakers. <laughs> they like. I Lakers. don't like the Lakers. I'm gonna get into my. Go ahead, Bill. Go all ahead, right, go ahead, Bill. Right, Bill. Right, right. So Save us over here. I, I just love the, the team that they put together was from the draft, right? They drafted Curry. They drafted Draymond. They drafted Thompson. Like they're not these super teams who put it together. Okay, and they've done good. it for a long time. All right. And so I love the way they play too. And so if I was playing in the NBA and on a team, I'd want to play for them. Okay. They pass the ball. You know, it's a whole team effort. Not, not only are they good on offense, they're good on defense. And so for that, I just like the style that they play. So okay. who you got coming so, out of the East? Uh, so who you got coming out of the East? Man. So my son, okay, my son Ethan, right, he's been, he's been praying. He, he wants to meet Giannis <laughs> and Steph Curry. And so he's been praying. He's like, man, if, if Giannis and Curry make it to the finals, That's a sign can we God? go? That's yeah. a sign no, from he God. He wants to go to the game. Absolutely. A sign from God. He wants to go to a game. He's like, can we get tickets? And uh, this is part Are you the- trying to win the Father of the Year award? Because this yeah. sounds like this would get you the award. Yes. And so I, I think if they both make it to the finals, I got to take them or try to find a way to get to the finals. Bro, those I, tickets I are going to be bucks. I know. So I'm shooting for. Bucks. I'm shooting for a uh, Golden State uh, 76ers game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's his, that's that's my guess. That's yeah, not a bull prediction, hey, but hey, those are the top two. If they're in the me. finals, you better sell a lot more houses, bro, because right. you're gonna need some money. Mm, that's gonna be expensive tickets. Okay, you guys. I mean, you're the basketball guy, D. Come on, who do you got? Like, what are you feeling over here? I don't. I'm going for Golden State. For you Golden don't even State. like Golden State. No, I, I like Curry. I like Curry. He's mm. good. I like the way he shoots. I like the way he plays. It's fun. Okay, then, right, is, does, is Curry a believer? Yeah, he, said, he, said, he says he's a believer. Come so. on, right, we got to throw it out there. <laughs> he says he's a believer. So okay. I was, I was Deshaun, Deshaun is so kind. Okay, but who you got coming out of the East? What do you got? Who, who, give us our matchup. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I hate the Celtics. And so what, why you I, don't want to see, I don't want to see them win. So. Bro, you got to admit, just admit, admit this, please. In front of everybody who's going to watch this, just admit this. You, you can't tell me that athletically the matchup wouldn't be amazing to see a Celtics Warriors final. How much? How many athletes? I mean, just guys who can just, I mean, shoot, 
play defense. Uh, you know, that's just going to be great. All the dunks that are going to happen, the trash talk. This is good. That's a good matchup. If you look at matchups, that's a fun matchup. That's like 120 a game matchup right there. I'd rather I'm see the Bucks. You. Yeah, I'd rather see the Bucks and the Celtics. Yeah. Okay. I, I have no love for the Celtics. Well, I mean, sorry, the Celtics, yeah. they think they're so great, but they won when there's no black people playing in, in the NBA. The <laughs> what are you talking about? I know. You, got, you, know, you guys yeah. got like three. Yeah, but all the rest of them is like, yeah, I mean, you had a bunch of white dudes who were no, plumbers no. playing. Of course you won. That. Of course you won. I'm offended. Bill Russell, what are you talking oh, about? Sorry. Yeah, okay, I, I take that back. You guys have the one black guy, and that's Will why you win all the championships. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Mike, do something, Mike. Do why are you something? it about race today, Deshaun? What about the Asian? Asian? No black people, only white people. Come, Mike, do something, Mike, do something. Root. Well, this as a, is crazy. As a proud Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the Celtics either. No, I don't like the Celtics. But uh, I'm going to go with the Suns Ooh. and the Celtics because both coaches have history in Portland. How you like that? Um, Ime, oh, yeah. my gosh. Shout out to Ime. He's the coach of the Celtics, right? Northeast mm-hmm. Portland. There it is. And then uh, Monty Williams, the coach of the Suns. He's a believer. I, yeah, he's legit. Really, hey, that's a believer. Yeah. Um, I can't stand Chris Paul, bro. I can't stand him. He hasn't been a winner. He's, he's. I don't know. I just, I, I can't stand him. He feels like I'm not going for Chris Paul. I'm I know, just saying but that's you got the Suns in it. there. I, it's just, I, I, I'm not a Chris Paul fan. Bill, I haven't, I have never heard you talk like this. You, you, you really interrupted Mike to say I'm not a Chris Paul fan. I'm, I'm just throwing it out. I, I'm just wondering how you really feel. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to get to your real feeling on that because that was, that was intense. So I can't see the Suns, man. I'm not. Okay. I'm not I got Suns and Celtics because of Portland. Okay, I I personally I would love to like I said I would love to see the Celtics against against the Warriors. I I just think athletically talent for talent that that'd be a good it'd be a fun game to watch. A lot of ankles being broken, a lot of, a lot of you know a lot of dunks and I just I think it, I think it'd be a fun. Plus Steph's gonna have like some amazing after party I'm sure so. <laughs> that was pointed at D. Hey, this is not offended podcast. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, we're gonna get down to some stuff that we've been wanting to talk about for a while here. This was just getting to know us a little bit, and you know, talking not always about the tower, uh, not all about the things that are always going on uh, around us, as far as from the news and uh, lawyers and courts and all this. And uh, we just want to take a little bit of time too to talk about other things that are going on. Here's something that's going on. I think it's very interesting. I do want to encourage everybody to go ahead and share this, uh, hit the like button, make a comment. But I want to talk to you about something that I found interesting. Um, someone had pulled me aside and they said, Anthony, uh, what do you find hardest about everything you're going through? Now, I know they're talking about with the lawsuits and the tower and all that. And you know what I said? I said, um, what I found hardest, and we're going to talk about politics right here. Uh, what I found the hardest is, I found it very hard to be a person of color and be a conservative. Hmm. I found it very hard to be a person of color and to be a conservative, be a conservative, uh, conservative person. And let me preface something real quickly, okay? I was not raised in church. I was extremely liberal. Uh, I, I was extremely liberal uh, before I found my faith and before I started serving the Lord and uh, following his ways and reading the word. So like, I, I understand where people are coming from when the arguments happen, but I found it really hard. Like people automatically stereotype me and I've never been insulted so much in my entire life until people find out how I view things, right? My ideologies, right? My philosophies. And I feel like to be a person of color, and to be a conservative is like the worst thing in the world I could possibly be, according to some people. I've been called so many different names, but I don't know. Have, have you guys have you guys felt that way? Have you guys seen that, or have you experienced anything like that? I don't Mike, know. you feel that way, Mike? What Come on, Token, <laughs> talk about it. Are you saying are you saying white's not a color? <laughs> You take a white piece of paper to a kid's color. <laughs> Deshaun. Yeah. Uh, hey, but I what's but what's the foundation, yeah. Deshaun? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to separate you two. You two are at it today, boy. This is good. Uh, I don't know, D. Bill. You guys ever you, 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 have you experienced that or what's up? We'll start over there. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'll ask you this. What, what's it mean to be a conservative to you? What, so what, I think like, when, yeah. that's, a, that's a great question. I think when people think conservative, so I think everybody knows this about me. I'm pro-life, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I believe that according to how I read the word and how I study the word, that life begins at conception. So I'm pro-life. Uh, one of the highest tenets of faith that you could have is life begins in that womb. That's when God's spirit literally did a miracle. So um, I'm pro-marriage, you know, one man, one woman. Uh, notice I didn't say one man, two women. I didn't say anything like one man, one woman, according to what God uh, originated in the Garden of Eden. He established uh, with Jesus when he went to a wedding. And it's what Paul wrote through the unction of the Holy Spirit, right? One man, one woman. Um, I am... Uh, I guess I don't really know too much past that of what they mean by a conservative, because here's the thing I do know to my conservative friends. They view me as as liberal when it comes to my social issues. Uh, I do believe there should be a pathway to citizenship for especially people who work in the fields, mm -hmm. for people who come over to work and to really make our society better. I think there should be a pathway. They consider me liberal in that and that uh, concept, I, I should say, I, I still see it as conservative because the Bible says that we should be nice to those, that we should create something for them, right? So that's just me. And, and I know people always wonder where you get that from because in Exodus it says, be nice to the immigrant, be nice to the alien because you were once an immigrant and an alien. And they, in, in, you know, and somebody brought you in. And even in, the, even in the book of Leviticus, as you read, you know, we are to do something, we are to give them their freedom and all these other things. So I do believe, plus, let's be honest, who else is going to work in the fields? Ain't nobody else going out there. I mean, who are we kidding? Somebody said, I'll go out there. No, you won't. You won't last an hour. Don't okay. say anything. In don't, Fresno heat. Sean. Don't, you don't, won't don't, last don't. in the heat. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. He was getting ready to say, Mike, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's, yeah, what, that's, they're, I guess that's yeah. what they're saying. But that's how I view it, right? That's how I view um my conservative that's my conservative yeah, I, thoughts I, I, but yeah. I would lean towards uh more conservative in a couple areas um uh, fiscally oh you know? okay and so on, on that sense uh smaller government you know i'm I, down I, for I, that i'm more for the uh individual you know taking part in um kind of their responsibilities instead of big government that's what i would okay. lean towards um Lower taxes. I know, Deshaun, you hit on this before, right? I don't think uh, you're going to get anybody to argue with you on lower, lower gas and lower taxes right now. I don't, I, some everybody's people, going. people who don't pay taxes. Oh, okay. That's good. That's, if the yeah. government giving you money, you're okay with not you're paying taxes. You're okay with the taxes being high. Okay. That's, that's, that's a good point. That's a good yeah, point. So More money I'm, for you. I'm for personal responsibility. But have you caught heat? You. Have you caught heat for having conservative as a, as a, as a person of color? Have you caught heat for yeah, this? Yeah, I think some, uh, mostly on social uh, more more of the social topics, right? You know, um, uh, we we've had discussions on, on abortions and, and things like that, and um, you know maybe immigration. I would lean towards you. Uh, you know, a pathway to immigration. We can't have open borders or nothing like that. Uh, you know, being uh, born in Brazil myself, I came over uh, and established uh, citizenship, but I came through the open door, right? Right. And so I, I would lean towards that. Um, and so, yeah, I would say those are the areas that, that for me would be important is on, on taxes, on individual liberties, uh, hmm. you know, rather than bigger government. So what about you, D? What about you, Bishop? Talk to us. Have you noticed this? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally don't even like the label of being called a conservative. Okay. I'm a Christian. Okay. Um, obviously people want to ask me just, just for terms to understand where my beliefs are. I, you know, I will say I'm conservative, but I, I, I don't even like choosing that side. Like my beliefs simply come from scripture. And so that obviously that's going to lean more towards conservative. Okay. So I know even talking to two of my friends or like, um, he was talking, actually talking to one guy was talking to his father. His father hated Trump. And he was like, he told his dad, like, I don't like Trump either, but his views match more of my, of the views I have. Oh, but, okay. But I really don't like the guy. But he stands for some of the things I stand for wow. compared to the other side. And it was like, that's sort of my view, too. It's like, I don't like the guy, but he supports my, my Christian views in many ways. I'm not saying he's even following them, but he's fighting for them. Wow. But the other side might not be even fighting for it. So you can say he's a racist, all this stuff. He, may, he might be. But he's also standing for the for for life, he, he which did. is a big deal for me. Yeah. He's fighting for churches, which is a big deal for me. He did. Nobody fought harder for churches. So it's not right. going to be like in my uh, Jerry Dyer liberal. fights hard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh, Mike. Hey, Mike. The Jerry fight Dyer for churches, here. not against churches, Mike. Oh, okay. No, hey, I have to give him credit. He he stood out there fighting for life. He did. He he, he yeah. did. I mean, that's 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 something he stood out there for, and he took a uh, hard stance on that. Other stuff I don't agree with. Who's that? Did. 
Jerry Dyer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did other stuff he didn't, but I see myself as a Christian first. I think first. he was standing under that same flagpole a year before that, too. Oh, here we go. Sorry, Mike, I, I, Mike, I, I, Mike, I don't need to interrupt. I don't need to interrupt. <laughs> go ahead, D. Yeah. But again, you go to the other side, they won't even stand for any of those things. So right. it's like sometimes you have to choose. You just, you, this is the better choice. Okay. Even though not by someone that you care for. But also, I do. I find myself in the spot where want to be careful what I say because even I, I, I get frustrated when people um, complain about race and like, like, oh, I can't, like you can't make it. it. To me, that becomes an excuse so much. I see so many people who are successful who are black in my life. I'm like, I, that's not an excuse anymore. Right. Like we can make it. Now it might be you have to take two steps to the person, the person next to you, you don't have to take one, but you can make it there. Right. And you can get there. But I remember talking to someone just recently and they were talking about talking to kids in school Right. And to me, I'm like, who cares? Like, so this is what happened at Bullard. Right. I'm like, man, what, he ain't going to come do that in front of me. What? I don't care. He can't stop right. me from getting good grades to do all this right. thing. But she was a teacher and she was like, well, when I'm sitting down with the kid and they're crying because they, they're they in the bathroom, they see black lives don't matter. And then they see this at school and they're like, man, am I really worth anything? You go tell them that. I'm like, you're right. That's a good point. That's You're a good right. Point. Yeah, it's, it's easy for me to say those things, but I'm not seeing a classroom with that kid. And so also I got to make sure I'm slow to even say those things, realize that um, not all people came from the same background I did. They don't have the same family, family support that I have. That's that my point. identity is secure in who God says I am and who my parents said I was. But some kids don't have that. So when they see those things, it affects them a lot harder than it affects me. Man, that was deep. That was the, I think you bring, that was, you bring up a very, very good point. And, and, I, and I just want to just make sure we note that real quick. You said that I, I can't make the mistake that some people didn't come from the same structure I did. And you realize that the structure you came from was solid. It, they gave you an identity in Christ, a secure foundation. That's yeah. very important. Thank you for saying that. Mike, now, I don't think people know your story. Like, like I know when I first met you, 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 were, you were not a believer. Um, and you were nowhere near if we had that label as conservative. That was not you. So I think most people may have judged you wrong or misunderstood you, but I know for a fact because we were talking about some stuff early on, and I was like, I don't think that's in the Bible, Mike. But uh, I mean, I'm not. Well, I didn't know what anything was in the Bible. I didn't know what was in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just, I just think, you know, speak on that. Like, like well, you've had to make that transition to even some of your own friends. Yeah. Well, let, look, I, I, I appreciate the conversation about race. Um, you know, I think when it comes to, uh, I can speak as a white man. Um, we're in a culture now where like, it's not even, I, I can't even affirm my kids that they have white in them. Yeah, that's true. Right. Without being racist. Um, we, you know, we talked about this, it, it, it's such a, um, a fine line between, you know, are you proud to be who you are or are you way far right? And like, you're this right wing, you know, misogynistic proud boy. Right. And I said, I'm, I'm not going to duck being a proud white man. Right. Right. I didn't get to choose my color. Just like none, nobody else in this room got to choose theirs. That's true. Right. So you got a problem with me, me being white. You go talk to God about it. That's true. Yeah. Um, but I, so I, one of the things that I know that, that I have to fight is that because of my conservative views, I'm not a white supremacist. Okay. That's interesting. I, so I, never, I, I never thought about it like that. So I get, sure. I get put into the box of you hate and then you fill in the blank. Oh, okay. So there's a different pressure on that end. So it's like, okay, because I have a view on marriage, I hate everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because I have a view on BLM, then I hate everybody of, of color. Because I have a view on immigration, then I hate everybody. And it's, it's like right away you get as a white, as a white male, right away you get pinpointed like, or you get put in this box, hmm. which is like, okay, well, if I'm supposed to respect your story, why don't you hear mine? Yeah. That's so a, that's fire right there. That's good. Absolutely. So every year for father's day, did you know that the only person that I have in my life who I text happy father's day is a black male? Right. Do you know that, uh, growing up all the men in my life that made a difference in my life outside of probably one that weren't related to me were all black males. Right. Did you know that I've never had a roommate who was white? Right. Actually, I, 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 well, I, you, I, I yeah. knew that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had like over 20 roommates. Right. I have never lived with a, 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 somebody who's white. I've, right. A, a, all these other different races, but I haven't had somebody who's right. white. Yeah. You know, you, so did you know that my wife's Mexican? Do you know right. that my kids are half Mexican? Right. So right away, if you see me at church, they put me on the face as a venture church because they right. want to write the story that we're a white supremacist church. And that's true. So that's I'm true. the white supremacist. Right. 
Right. No, I think I no, I, I think this is good. I'm glad we're talking about it because I don't think the church talks enough about it. You know, I remember when all of that race stuff went down, everybody I want to go, you know, everybody, I shouldn't say everybody. Let me let me back up. That's going to get us in a lot of trouble. I remember when all the race relations went down, all, everything that was going on with the George Floyd and all that. It I, it pained me to see how these white churches that are predominantly, if not all white staff members, went out and found their only black friend who was a pastor and brought him up on stage. And I was like, you really got to go hire somebody for the day? That just is insulting. You should have already been thinking about, you know, how do, how do we, di you know, how do we make it more diverse and all these other things if we're going to be kingdom, right? But you had to go out and get your, the only friend you have. That to me was just embarrassing. I felt so bad. I really did. I was like, we got to do better. We can do better. We are better. And then right? they were asking we're you, they were asking you, what are you going to do? Yeah, I, that was funny. <laughs> they, they did ask me, what am I going to do? I'm going to have church. I'm going to hire a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> how you like that? <laughs> I did. I hired you. I don't know what they want from me, but I, I think that's interesting. But I feel like the church has been silenced. Like we're not allowed to talk about it. It's like, is we're back to these two things. Hey, you can't talk about politics and you can't talk about religion. Well, who else is going to talk about it? If you leave it up to the world and under Caesar, everybody will come back a Roman. I said that the other day. Yeah. But if you're going to be kingdom, then you got to talk about it inside and in context of the kingdom. You need to get involved politically. Because these people are writing laws. We're only in this situation. Don't believe the hype. We're only in this we're only in this situation that we're in because it's politics. Because the people across the street don't like the way we have church. Well, newsflash, we have church the way the Bible tells us to have church. I didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. The word of God did. This is how he tells me I'm to run a church. And it's Jesus' church. It's not even my church. It belongs to Jesus. And I don't care what type of whack pastor you got who tries to tell you that we're wrong and they're right and they're going contrary to the word of God. That is a false teaching. That's why you don't grow spiritually. That's why you're, st you, you know, you're stagnant or you're living in sin. You got an itchy ear and he knows how to scratch it. Hmm. That's it. But we're going to preach the Bible. And part of preaching the Bible is getting involved in these things that matter. And I don't think the church has done that well enough. And I don't think we follow. I love what you said, Bishop. We have to follow the word of God. We are a believer first. Philippians 3.20. My citizenship is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And we have to start. That's to tell people all the time. They're like, well, you, are you American, Mexican? Or are you Mexican, American? I'm a Christian first. Mm -hmm. I have died, Galatians 2.20, so that Christ can live through me. Oh, you're not proud of the rasa. Yes, I am. I realize who my grandparents are, who my parents are. I get that. But I'm a believer now. My citizenship is in heaven. And I think we don't get, and, and listen, only reason I'm coming out hot is I'm tired of people doing that to me. You know, they call me, I, like I said, I've never been so insulted in my life because I have the biblical worldview, which they call conservative. I call it biblical. And I'm tired of the rest of people of color getting shade thrown. Just like I'm tired of, you're right. I'm tired of people picking on you you know, oh, he's the face of adventure as a white supremacist. Bro, I didn't even know you had white friends until your one white friend moved from Portland. He's, he's goofy, though. He's cool. I like him. But he moved down there, and I was like, Mike does have a white friend. It's a miracle because he didn't hang out with anybody who wasn't of color. And that's what I'm saying. I, I agree with you, and I think that's unfair. I think it's unfair. And, yes, my kids are half white, too. So it's like I think this, this isn't right. But the church needs to talk about it from a biblical perspective. Period. So, yeah. that brings me to this. So, as you know, June is around the corner. I think the mail-out ballots are coming out this week. And one, three, five, seven are all up for re-election. That is Arius. Soria's seat is going to be open. That is Esparza. And that is uh, Chavez. Chavez. That's, that's Chavez. Um, so here's what I want to say. Shout out to Chavez. He voted no. I think he is fiscally sound. And if you live in his district, it's between him and, I believe, uh, Brandon. Vang. Yeah, Vang, I think. Or Vang, okay. Brandon Vang, something like Yeah, that. something like that. Uh, but I would say this. Uh, I think, I, I can't tell you who to vote for, but shout out to... Luis, I, I think he did right by Adventure Church. I think he did right. I think he's a pragmatist. I think, you know, shout out. That's all I'm saying, you know. Yeah, uh, shout out to Luis Chavez for actually looking at the facts that were in, in front of him and saying, hey, I may not even align with them, 
you know, um, and when it comes to scripture or when it comes to, I don't, I don't know him like that. So, right. but he, but I also know that he is, he, he hasn't before came out and said, Hey, like, no, not like Bredefeld did. Right. Yeah. So I think he looked at what was in front of him and he said, obviously this is crazy. It's not good for Fresno is what it's he said. It's not good for the people. These are, this is not good for the constituents that I represent. So let me ask. So this is good. This is what I'm getting to. So I don't know how Soria Arias um in Esparza can actually say they're pro God when you're kicking a church out. How can you get well, up and say you're pro church, you're pro God, you're pro pastors? You're how can you even say you're pro Bible? I don't think they're saying that, are they? So what they're saying is the opposite by the way they voted, because this no, is a political hit piece. I don't speak on it. What do you think? Is it a political hit piece or what? Oh no, they they're they're not pro God whatsoever. They're anti God. They're against God. Miguel doesn't like church. He doesn't like God. He doesn't like pastors. Yeah, but he doesn't care because he's going to win anyways. Okay. So. Well, I, I'm going to be putting some links to some people. Uh, Wildstar is going to be running. Jeremy Priest is going to be running. Uh, these are people running uh, in his districts. Just I, I just say consider your options, consider your choices. Uh, I know I know Esparza is running. I know someone who's running against him. There's a young gal named Courtney Westfall. She's going to be running against him. I'm just saying look at your choices. But do you really want people who are anti-God, anti-church, who are anti, you know, churches in neighborhoods, calling it zoning when it's just a political hit piece. Because here's what I like to say. Who's next? If it's us first, then who's next? I just think you just need to know some options. I mean, what do you think, Bill? Yeah, I mean, get out there and find out who's who's running. Um, you know, and so, you know, you'll see signs and it's it's starting to get heated up here. I think we have primaries in June. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, get out there, get informed, guys. Uh, get informed of who's running in your district. L Luis Chavez is in Southeast Fresno, um, and that, that's where he's at. So we talked about him a little bit. So if you're in Southeast Fresno, go find out. Um, go find out who's running and, and make that uh, you know make make that right choice. You know, I'm not gonna say vote either way, one way or the other, but at least get to know your candidates and who's running. So because it's important, it's important that. That you get involved in, um, you know, more so locally than than nationally. You know, you absolutely the, the the four council members here that are up for election are going to have way more effect on your lives here in Fresno than a national race. Yeah, that okay? is so true. And and that's what's important because a lot of us come out for these national races, and I know this is an off year uh, for for a presidential race. Uh, but these are the years that are important, especially on those school boards, right? School board races, all these type of uh, races, these, these, it's very important. And it's important that the church gets out there. You know, I'm glad you brought up a school board. And we need to, we need to just take a break here real quick. And we need, we need to bring it up. So you have an update for us on James Martinez, who's actually, is he on a school board or what does he do again, Mike? Yeah, he's on the Fresno County Office of Education uh, School Board. So James Martinez is a trustee. Who um, was all, voted in? Correct. Yeah, he, he's he's voted in, um, and uh, I, I I would encourage you to look that up online as far as where you're located and uh, if your children are represented by him. So he sits on a he sits on a different board like what we're talking about with the city school council, board. right? Because the school board, I mean, his job is to represent kids and families. Um, so like, why are we talking about James Martinez? Well, James Martinez protests against Adventure Church. So my question to, to Deshaun has been like, hey, how, how is it that you have a trustee whose position, elected a position is to protect kids, to serve kids, to make sure that they have an emotional well-being? Remember, that's real big now, right? Making sure that kids feel that's true. Em emotionally safe place, safe, safe place. place, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's literally condoning the signs that our kids see, the kids getting cussed at as they walk into church, the, the filming, the vile men wearing like uh, they're half nude speedos. on Sunday morning speedos, shaved chests. He's he's condoning all this stuff by standing on the corner and protesting. And, and you tried to call him, correct? So I, I tried to hit up James because I, I you know what I said um, it's important that I talk to him first. So I called him. He didn't answer. So then I got a hold of the Fresno County Office of Education superintendent. I talked to him. I said, hey, this is what's going on. I tried to reach out to James. James didn't hit me back. This is the situation. He pretty much washed his hands of it and said. He pulled a pilot? Oh, yeah. He pretty, he pretty much said, I've got no control of this guy. He's got his own autonomy. He goes out there. He, does, he doesn't represent the, 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 uh, the board. And I'm like, he doesn't represent the board. Okay, whatever. So then he goes, look. I'm sure that if you give him a call and you leave him a message, 
he'll call you back. I said, all right, I called him once, but because I respect you, I'll do what you asked me to do. So what I do, I hang out, hang up with him. I call James, leave him a message. It's been over almost two weeks. No call back. James, holler at your boy. I'll talk to you. I, I really will. I mean, I know you don't want to talk to me, but then I, I emailed um, the superintendent back. I said, just so you know, I did exactly what you did, or what you asked me to do. I know it was an important issue for you, but obviously it's not an important issue for him. He wow. didn't, hey, he didn't okay. email me back, though. Okay, so. Deshaun, I, I think he represents your children, too. Uh, you got any thoughts, comments on that? Oh, no, I called him, too. He didn't he, answer. He didn't call you back either? Ooh. What's he got against the adventure? James Martinez, or anybody who knows James Martinez, uh, could you let him know that we're just trying to get a hold of you? Uh, we want to hear your, your side on things. Yeah. We want to hear why you're over there. Look, look Why you're not representing all look, the kids? Hey, this is the card. The card is this. We don't like you because you're gay. Okay? Look. My mom's are gay. I got no issue with you, okay? There are people at our church who are gay. And guess what? We know they're gay. So, <laughs> like, it's not, That's don't play point. the card. Okay. Please don't play the card. It has okay. nothing to do with your gayness, okay? All this has to do with the fact is that you say that you represent kids mm -hmm. and you sign off on all this stuff. You sign off on masked men and fatigues, harassing kids, parents who are coming in, like, being totally distraught because of what they have to see outside. And then you sit on the corner and you smile in the camera. With Tyler Mackey. With Tyler, Tyler Mackey. Mackey. And try to, say that, decide to try to say that you represent all kids. Man, you're whack. No, you don't. Well, that brings us to this. Well, wow, Mike, 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 Mike always has those moments where he's just, I'm, you know what? I'm saving you a hundred bucks a week on therapy, Mike. You are so welcome right here. You, you're able to get that. You're able <laughs> to get that off your chest. Right here. We get an hour. That's it. You get it. Okay. So check this out. I got something. We got late breaking news. Uh -huh. I need to tell everybody, and it's how we're going to close it off right here. Um, the city council, drum roll please, the city council this Thursday. If you're not doing anything this Thursday, come on back down uh, to the city council. They're going to be meeting again. Same room, uh, 9 o'clock again, I believe, was it? Yeah, 9 yeah. o'clock, they'll, they'll open up the chamber there. Yeah. Okay, and what are they voting on? I, I heard we saw two little topics I think everybody's going to want to know about. Go ahead. Yeah, so Mike Carbasi, um, council member, uh, is putting on the agenda. Shout out to Mike Carbasi, though. Come on, man, with them questions. Uh, Fire. Uh, he put on two things. Uh, he, he, he's, um, he's wanting to subpoena Lawrence. Okay, the owner of Tower Theater. Y'all put up some emojis right now. Did you yeah, hear that? Go. So uh, he wants to hear directly from Lawrence uh, at a council meeting because he has some questions for him. The uh, none of, majority of the council hasn't heard directly from Lawrence. Okay. Uh, and hey, so, y'all need to share this because we need to hear from Lawrence. Lawrence needs to talk. We need to hear what's really going on, Lawrence. So my, Mike's Come on. Thing, uh, Councilman, uh, Mike's thing is if we're going to indemnify him, mean, we're going to cover all his attorney fees and legal battles and stuff. We at least want to hear from you. And so he's he's uh, he's he's putting the, on the agenda to subpoena Lawrence one. And I believe I saw something in there that they're actually looking to amend the uh, the indemnification part of this deal that the city has with Tower. Meaning, I, I don't know what part of it. Uh, maybe it's, you know, maybe he doesn't get covered fully on there or what, but that's the part that I think most of the council members have an issue with. Mm. They, they might be okay with the six and a half million dollar purchase price, but identifying Lawrence and his attorney fees and Sequoia through all this, they all have an issue. Well, majority of them have an issue with that, so. So if you're not doing nothing this Thursday, we're going to be out there. Uh, we are definitely going to be there. Um, I don't care if I got to hang out all day again. I, I'm going to clear my calendar. I'm going to make it happen. But you need to get out to the city. We just need to show up because if they open it up to where we can have a comment or we can say some, you know, we're coming back in. We're coming back in and we're going to say some things again, uh, how this is just a, it's a shady deal. It's not good for Fresno. Uh, of course, it's not good for Adventure Church. Um, I think we need to re re restate these facts. That's what's really going on. But we invite you guys to come on out. Do us a favor. Uh, we appreciate everybody for tuning in uh, to the Not Offended podcast. And hopefully this brings a little bit of a joy to your life as well as information. We, we try to keep it informative. But do us a favor. When it comes to this stuff about the tower, uh, you are our greatest asset. OK, you are our greatest blessing. Uh, we don't get a fair shake in the media. Uh, a shout out to Diane Pierce and, you know, in the Fresno Bee this weekend. Great article. Please share that. Uh, you know, there's a few like Trevor Carey always coming through, always helping us out. Uh, you know, you, you got uh, those at 1550. Um, that always help us out. Pastor Jim Franklin, Guillermo, all these guys really, really do right by us. But for the most part, from the mainstream media, we don't really get that love. So you guys, this is working. I get people who stop me. I encourage you, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, if you see this podcast, stop me. 
And like I tell everybody all the time, prove me wrong that Adventure Church owning the Tower Theater is a bad deal. Come prove me wrong. Come prove me wrong. I'm telling you, if you just, if you just listen and you look at the facts, Adventure Church owning it is the best way to go. So, but please get the word out. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. We're going to be back next week with the Not Offended Podcast, but thank you so much for tuning in. We love you guys. We're praying for you. And please like, share, and comment. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.